and welcome to Salubrious Skin with Dr. Irene podcast. This podcast is all about how to attain healthier skin. You may be struggling with a skin condition such as psoriasis or eczema or acne, or perhaps a condition that causes the skin to become unhealthy, such as PCOS or irritable bowel or Crohn's disease. Regardless of what your condition is, healthy skin is attained by having a healthy body. So my mission is about bringing a huge array of experts to your attention in various areas of health. I hope you find this information knowledgeable and insightful and helpful for your specific journey in having better health. Remember to always connect with us through Facebook at Dr. Irene Prantelos, Psoriasis and Healthy Skin. You can email me at info at I hope you enjoy the show and please feel free to give us any sort of insight into what you feel you need to hear in future episodes. Hello and welcome to Salubrious Skin with Dr. Irene. Today I want to talk about some misconceptions perhaps that are centered around skincare and whether uh, it's it's beneficial or whether it's a complete waste of money or what should we actually do to care for our skin if we actually have to do anything or does it do it on, on its own and uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because the skincare industry is ginormous it is huge and the reality is is that uh, many of us perhaps don't know what we're using we're told to use this because we have to use it and i want to keep it really simple and straightforward and explain a little bit about the skin's physiology so we know what products we need to use and the reasons why and then from there extend out as to which ones we should be looking for and later on also there will be uh, another podcast show on the chemicals to avoid in skincare because that's really important. Don't necessarily go by the reputation of a brand. You know, some brands have an enormous amount of, of marketing budget and they might focus their um, advertising on, on one key ingredient. But then when you read all the ingredients, uh, there may be a whole lot of um, ingredients there that, that aren't beneficial for your skin. So, you know, you, you need to be mindful of the fact that the whole blend needs to be healthy for your skin and not specifically one or two ingredients. Okay, so is it essential we have skincare? Do we need skincare? I mean, if we go back thousands of years, I'm pretty sure no one had L'Oreal or uh, Sukin or, or, or whatever skincare brand in their um, makeup kit, or even if they had a makeup kit, that is. Uh, so, you know, if we've lived so many, uh, you know, thousands of years without anything, why do we suddenly need all this sort of stuff? And and the reason is, there's a couple of reasons. And I speak to a lot of people about this because we do have our own skincare brand. So whether we're at um, trade shows or or exhibitions or whether I'm speaking on stage, this is a common discussion that comes up. Do we actually need these products and why do we need them? And as I said, a lot of people think uh, I just wash my skin with water or I use coconut oil. And that's all I need. Uh, It's very hydrating and cleansing at the same time. And that's the only product I have. Some people say they use soap. It's a a nice pH neutral soap. So it doesn't affect the pH balance in the skin and all these sort of things that come with an explanation that is, uh, you know, validifying their, um, or validating is probably a better word, their uh, decision. Now, the main reasons why we need to cleanse our skin is because our skin is is naturally rejuvenating all the time. We have glands in our skin, sweat glands, sebaceous glands, that based on the circumstances and the environment you're in, will will release sweat or sebum. And when this is situated on the face, it can actually upset the pH balance. It can cause irritations to the skin. It can block the pores and also lead to perhaps some skin problems. You know, if you, if you sweat on the face and you're just simply washing that with water, you know you're not getting rid of any of the pollutants that have acquired onto the skin during the day. Or if, you know, you go to the gym, I, I know that I sweat you know, pretty profusely when I go to the gym. So uh, to simply use water, I'm not actually getting rid of all the the dirt that my 
body has expelled through the sweating process. And, and another reason is, like I said, uh, environmental factors that we're um, coming across, in, you know, pollution and smog, uh, all these sort of things when we're coming into contact during the day, makeup. Although I must say coconut oil is a great one to remove eye makeup. Don't really need any fancy eye make makeup removal uh, creams. Uh, the eye, coconut oil is, is wonderful for that. And also uh, our skin naturally sheds every 28 days. So if we don't exfoliate or cleanse, then the buildup of our skin can be um, causing a little bit of a, a dull complexion, a bit of dryness, and also um, create that sort of real weathered, tired look, uh, almost like making the skin look leathery because, you know, it, it's not being exfoliated or cleansed. So with all that in mind, let's just keep it really simple. You know, cleansing needs to be done twice a day, you know, in the morning when you wake up because... You might think, well, I had a shower the night before and I cleansed my skin thoroughly and what would have happened during my sleep? While we sleep, we actually are, our, our body is rejuvenating. That's, that's the, most, the most intense time our body rejuvenates is when we sleep. And that's why if we're unwell or, or uh, you know, feeling, you know, whether it's the flu or whether we've got an, a disease that we're trying to deal with, Sleeping is the best way to actually assist this process to to rejuvenate the body and heal. But what happens in that time is definitely the you know we can have sweat, we can sweat at night, we can you know um, have the dead cells on our our on our, um, on our pillows and our sheets. You know, there's dust mites there, all sorts of little things there. So it's nice to cleanse the skin in the morning. And then obviously you may or may not choose to wear wet makeup if you're, if you're a lady or, or a gentleman even. And whether you do or don't, the, the fact is that uh, what we eat, uh, our, our hormonal situation, you know, are we a preteen and we're getting a massive uh, hormonal boost? Are we, you know, um, you know in, with women with various times in their cycle, with different hormones being dominant, our, our uh, sebaceous glands are re you know, responding to that hormonal change. You know, are we menopausal and our, and our skin is re responding to that? So our skin is simply in communication with our body all the time. So with that, our sebaceous glands will um, release more sebum or not necessarily as much. Our diet is also another factor that will release more sebum. So it's really important to understand that there are elements outside our control that will create an environment for our skin that needs to be taken care of. So cleansing morning and night. Now, if you can exfoliate or mask one to two times a week, that will be great because, like I said, every 28 days your skin will uh, shed off some some dead skin and if we can really get rid of that there's there's several things that will happen first of all you're going to make your complexion look a lot brighter and sometimes people get a little bit addicted to exfoliating because of that factor you know they they feel so good that and they look good their their skin looks brighter and so they they want to exfoliate uh almost like on a daily basis but i wouldn't necessarily encourage that but definitely one to two times a week you can either exfoliate in the shower, so use your mask and just exfoliate the skin in the shower, or leave the mask on. And I know of people that leave their mask on for, you know, 20, 30 minutes. And sometimes I'll leave the mask on while I'm doing housework, you know, towards the end part. So I know, it's, you know, it might take me a couple of hours to do the house and I might think, okay, for the last half hour, I quickly apply the mask on because I usually get really sweaty after cleaning the house and I think I'm going to have a shower anyway, so I may as well put the mask on, let it sit there for a good half hour and then you know, have a shower and, and rinse it all off. Now, once we cleanse, we are clearing a lot of the oils that are naturally on the skin. And this is something that's really important for people with acne. If you have acne and you are cleansing your skin, you need to hydrate and nourish your skin. And many people with acne have overproduction of 
sebum from the sebaceous gland. So they tend to say, oh, my skin is really greasy. I don't want to moisturize it. You need to find yourself a nice light moisturizer that is enough to hydrate the skin without instigating the sebaceous glands to release sebum. Because what happens in that instance is that the sebum will block your pores and cause more acneic lesions, which you don't want. So you must hydrate and nourish. Now, in our range, we've got a spritzer and that is wonderful to use either post-cleansing or post-exfoliating, uh, but you can actually use it during the day. If you're in an environment during the day that the air conditioning is on or the heating is on and you're finding your skin really dry and cracked, you can just apply that over the skin, uh, even over, over makeup. And you don't necessarily have to rinse your makeup off. It doesn't disrupt your makeup at all because it's a slight spritz. And what that has is uh, essential oils, um, hydrosols, which will hydrate the skin as well as nourish it as well. And always with the nourishing comes the, the moisturizers. So, you know, if you're doing this before bed, using a really intense night moisturizer will be lovely because, like I said, that's the most rejuvenating time of the day and to nourish the skin at that time. It can be a little bit thicker, a little bit more greasy, but that's going to allow the oils to really seep into the skin and, be, and, and uh, have its impact on, on the health of the skin. And during the day, you can use a light moisturiser, depending on what your skin is like. Now, usually it's important to, to uh, avoid any areas where you've got eczema or psoriasis. You know, exfoliating psoriasis is not a good idea. I mean, you can gently exfoliate it, say, sitting in a salt water bath, but not necessarily with really vigorous um, mask because the reality is, is that uh, psoriasis is uh, the over... Uh, production of of skin cells so if we're shedding that if we're exfoliating those skin cells then it's going to instigate that mechanism even more and make the psoriasis worse but it's important to you know um, hydrate the skin at, at other areas if you've got a lesion here and there just avoid it and and use the other areas and, and treat those the other thing i wanted to mention as far as masks are concerned it's pretty simple you got your green mask I know there's a whole lot of uh, like there's charcoal masks and things like that, but keeping things simple, we don't rush into the marketing machine and, and buy anything that's new on the market. The green mask is detoxifying, draws things out. So if you are feeling a little bit congested, you're finding your skin has a few more blemishes than what you want it or what you're used to having, or, you know, really ideally you don't want any blemishes on the skin. Doing a detoxifying mask is probably the beneficial way to get that out. Also looking at your diet, avoiding sugar and greasy fatty foods and all that sort of stuff is beneficial because those foods instigate more sebum release and that will block your pores and increase acne as well. Then you've got your pink and red clays. They're really quite rejuvenating and for anti-aging. So your pink clay is for sensitive skin. Pink is actually a mixture of white and red clay. And you obviously put um, equal parts and then it, it becomes pink. And that's a little bit more sensitive for more gentle for sensitive skin uh, and then you've got the red clay that's really quite rejuvenating for mature skin or, or aging skin so white clay is you know pretty pretty minimal in, on it, in its impact you can actually eat white clay it's that um, it, it draws toxins out of your body but when we're talking about therapeutic effect on our skin we really want to stick with the green for acne or really congested skin or if you're feeling a little bit greasier or you know maybe you've had a, a hard weekend you know busy weekend or whatever it is use the green clay because that's much better for you and um, just thinking if there's anything else obviously when we're caring for our skin we always have to talk about diet but that's um other other uh podcast shows I've, I've done but for today it really was focused on why you have to use skincare take home message is cleanse your skin twice a day exfoliate one to two times a week hydrate your skin after uh, you cleanse it and nourish it so utilize a cream that's packed with vitamins healing oils botanical extracts 
beautiful ingredients that really nourish your skin and rejuvenate it. And that's about it. You don't need any more than that. And uh, obviously other elements like stress and diet is something to take into consideration. And if you're doing this on a regular basis and you're still struggling, then you need to extend out and look at other factors that are involved in, in impacting this, the health of your skin. Okay, so that's it. It's a quick video today. Just something that was easy for you to take in and look into your, your pantry, look into your, your medicine cabinet, see what you've got. Uh, check out our next video that's on uh, uh, ingredients that you should be avoiding. Line up all your bottles and, and get them all ready for, for our, our next podcast on, on how to pinpoint which ingredients you should be avoiding and which you should not. So thanks for joining me today and stay tuned and be sure to subscribe to Salubrious Skin with Dr. Irene and any feedback, please leave it in the comments box. I always love reading any sort of feedback or, or comments. I do tend to talk a little bit quickly. So if that's something that you want me to slow down, I'll definitely make a conscious effort to do that. But for now, have a great day and I'll see you at the next show.